1280 B.C. As the sun rises over the west bank of Thebes, another week in the service of the pharaoh begins for a team of workmen who live here in this village of Deir el Medina. Every morning, these workmen kiss their wives and children goodbye and begin a one-hour commute on foot to their office on the other side of these mountains in a place we know today as the Valley of the Kings. Today, we associate the Valley of the Kings with Pharaoh Tutankhamun, popularly known as King Tut, whose body was found there completely undisturbed in 1922. But gold and artifacts aside, Tut's actual tomb is one of the smallest and simplest in the entire valley. Tomb building really hit its stride 40 years after Tut was buried during the reign of Seti I. When Seti I came to power in 1294 BC, he inherited a fragile empire. For the previous six decades, Egypt had faltered in the wake of Akhenaten's chaotic reign. There was a real need to re-strengthen Egyptian power in its traditional form and to get back to the kind of height of empire that we had seen under Thutmose III. Seti I had a real challenge in front of him as he sought to recreate that empire again. Seti was a battle-tested soldier who had previously served as Egypt's supreme military commander. With the discipline and determination expected of an army veteran, he would restore order to the kingdom and absolute power to the throne. His strategy would rely on two time-tested tactics, conquest and construction. At Karnak Temple, Seti would leave his mark by commissioning the legendary Hypostyle Hall, one of the wonders of ancient architecture. It is a vast forest of 134 towering columns, some as tall as a seven-story building. The columns are so wide that it takes 10 grown men linked arm in arm to surround one. What the ancient Egyptians were trying to do was to build a big room. Unfortunately, they never were able to master interior space. So if you wanted a big room, you had to fill it with a huge number of columns. Tucked away in a remote corner at Karnak is an unfinished column that reveals how Seti's builders created such towering pillars of polished stone. First, the area around the base of the column was filled in with mud and rubble. Then, rounded slabs of stone were dragged up a mud ramp and stacked one by one. When you reached roof level, you started to take the dirt away, and you dressed the surfaces of columns and walls. And eventually, when all the dirt is taken away and all of the dressing is removed, you have a perfect column. While the columns in the hypostyle hall cemented Seti's engineering legacy, its wall reliefs bolstered his tough guy persona. The pharaoh was determined to reclaim the northeastern territory lost during the Amarna period. So he launched a series of military strikes into Syria and Palestine, where he commandeered Phoenician ports and trade routes. The reliefs at Karnak show Seti capturing and killing prisoners of war during those campaigns. As Seti's soldiers were terrorizing Egypt's northeastern neighbors, his tomb builders were preparing his eternal residence in the Valley of the Kings. There, the work took on the efficiency of an assembly line. First, a team of stonemasons began cutting the tomb out of solid rock with simple copper chisels. They were issued with these oil lamps, and you knew how long the oil lamp and the wick would last. So if they used up their oil lamps and wicks, you knew that they were working for the right amount of time. But if they didn't, you knew that they'd been cheating you. Plasters followed behind the stonemasons, covering the rough walls with a layer of gypsum and whitewash to make them smooth. Once the walls had been prepared, several artists would come and sketch the plan of the master craftsman, and the sketches would be made in black ink. And then the master would come along and correct these in red. And in some places, we still have the correction so you can tell where people messed up. 
the sketches identified the pharaoh with the sun god Ra and depicted his journey through the underworld during the night. In the burial chamber at the back of the tomb, that journey would culminate with the pharaoh's rise into the heavens the next morning to begin his journey across the sky. Once these scenes were sketched out, the walls were turned over to sculptors who meticulously chiseled away the surface surrounding each drawing to create a three-dimensional raised relief. Some people would just specialize on hands, some people would do faces, so you would have different workers working at different times on the various parts of a tomb wall. Once the wall had been completely carved, it was painted. As each team of workers made their way further into the mountain, it became clear that Seti's tomb would be unlike any ever built. It began with a long entrance corridor, descending down two staircases before reaching a deep vertical shaft designed to catch flood water and robbers. Tomb robbery was a constant hazard, and we know that from documents found at Dal Medina, which is the village where the tomb builders lived, uh, that um, from time to time, the people involved in tomb robberies were found out and brought to trial. If robbers made it past the shaft, they would encounter an elaborate ruse on the other side, a false burial chamber. It was big enough for a pharaoh's tomb, but left empty and unfinished, sending the message that no one was buried here. But beneath the floor to the left of the false burial chamber, a secret staircase was hidden. It led to another long corridor that opened up into the real burial chamber. This is where Seti I was buried. Seti's tomb is the most fantastic. Nothing like that had ever been found before. And although there are other very beautiful tombs in the Valley of the Kings, Seti's tomb is the most thoroughly decorated of all of them. Seti I, whose triumphs in building and in battle had restored Egypt to its former glory, died unexpectedly in 1279 BC. An examination of his mummy suggests that he was less than 40 years old. After Seti's death, the torch was passed to his son, Ramses II. Ramses would father more than 100 children, survive ancient Egypt's most legendary battle, and blanket every corner of the empire with massive monuments to his own ego. His 67-year reign would mark the peak of ancient Egypt's glory and sow the seeds of its demise.